So this is the beautiful parliament building of Pest. And over there is Buddha. Welcome to Budapest. Budapest and over the next few days we're going to try and show you all the main tourist attractions that are here and there's a lot starting with Elizabeth Square which is where I am now and the beautiful Danube fountain which was built in 1883 another interesting place of course is the Budapest Eye which is behind me For 10 euros, the eye will give you a great viewpoint of the city. And if you don't mind the height, you'll be able to see some of the beautiful landmarks of the city. And one place you'll see that dominates the skyline is St. Stephen's Basilica. And you'll always see something interesting en route. Some of them have actually got names on. St. Stephen's Basilica. This beautifully decorated church wasn't actually completed until 1905 and was named after the first king of Hungary, Stephen I. If you take a walk down to the Danube River on the Pest side, you'll come across the Chain Bridge, the Seceni Bridge, which was built in 1849. This is a popular crossing point to get to the sites on the Buddha side of the river. Staying on the Pest side, not far from here, is a moving memorial to a terrible atrocity that happened during the Second World War. It's a tribute to the thousands of people who were ordered to remove their valuable shoes then shot by the Arrow Cross Fascist Party militiamen, their bodies falling into the river. Staying on the pest side, the next building you come to is one of the biggest in Hungary, if not the biggest the Parliament Building. In fact, there are so many lovely buildings in this area, including embassies, banks and museums all around Liberty Square and finishing off with a statue of Ronald Reagan. Of course, if you're lucky enough to be there in December, you can enjoy the Christmas markets. And our favorite market was next to St. Stephen's Basilica. Which one are you going to get? I'm going to ask for a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now for a marshy It's lovely, isn't it? It's called brandy, I think. Very expensive. Mm, you don't drink alcohol, though, do you? Mm -hmm. yeah. The atmosphere is lovely, but don't expect things to be cheap.
try a hot chimney. The evening has an even better atmosphere and we were surprised they did a showing of the Nutcracker Suite on the actual Basilica. Budapest is a spa city and the Seceni Baths, which opened in 1913, have become the most famous baths in Europe and possibly the world. This is a truly beautiful building and houses numerous pools and saunas of different temperatures. The baths were named after Isvan Seceni, a Hungarian politician and writer who is still held in high regard in Hungary. The baths are situated in the fabulous city park and opposite across the main road is the Weiderhunyard castle. This fantastic building looks like it's come out of Disneyland and is actually the agricultural museum. And en route to there you might bump into this character. <laughs> We weren't quite sure if he was singing in any particular language, but he certainly brought a smile to our faces. The Vida Hunyard Castle was originally built for an exhibition in 1896 out of cardboard and wood. It was so popular that they rebuilt it out of stone and brick and it was completed in 1908. Just a couple hundred metres away from this is a huge outdoor ice skating rink. This is only in the winter time of course. Or if you can't skate there's a restaurant and bar overlooking it. And on your walk back to the nearest underground station, you come across Heroes Square and the Millennium Monument, which is flanked on both sides by art museums. All these places are fabulous day or night. I've been absolutely blown away by the architecture here in Budapest. It really is amazing. I can't believe I've not been here before. If you're active, it's easy to walk around Budapest, but there is every form of transport you could think of. And the one we used most of all was the underground. So let's take a look at the Buddha side of Budapest. We're on the Buddha side now, which is a bit hilly. More steps. Of course you could always get a bus up here.
every inch of the walls in this church are painted. Even the floor's coloured. It can get quite busy up here at certain times of the day, but it's such a lovely area, you'd have to expect that. And Jamie Oliver's got a restaurant up here. We had no idea at the time, but this is probably the most beautiful spot to take photographs of Budapest as night falls. And this is the area of the castle, the National Art Gallery and the History Museum. Unfortunately, we'll have to cover them in our next trip. There are many different areas of the city where you can find theatres, shops, restaurants and bars to suit every taste and pocket. We didn't find any of the food particularly cheap, but the drink certainly was. We even found a great Turkish restaurant. But we especially liked the area in and around the Jewish Quarter. Well, we've ordered our Hungarian goulash. Um, we were lucky to get in this restaurant because it was fully booked, but we've managed to squeeze a table for one hour. So definitely reserve a table if it's on a weekend. And there we also found a bar in an old building which reminded me of Steptoe and Son's yard. And we didn't realise, but it's quite famous too. We went in on a Sunday morning and there was also a market in there. It's got to be one of the quirkiest, scruffiest, but probably most popular bars I've ever been in. It's basically a junk shop that's turned into a bar. Follow us on Facebook, Mick Amja. YouTube, Mick Scarsbrook. Please hit the bell and subscribe if you haven't already. In the description, you'll find something interesting. Thanks for watching.